Welcome back to the Morgan Homestead. I'm Kevin. And I'm Sandy. And if you're new to our channel, thank you so much for joining. Um, our story, real quickly recapping, is we sold our house in the cities um, after living there all of our lives and moved up north to our property. Kevin built this beautiful log cabin home behind us and we started homesteading. Um, we started out with chickens, um, then we ended up getting some pigs. Um, we now have turkeys and ducks as well. And as we said in the last video, we have a real exciting big announcement to make. At least it's exciting for us. Yeah, so we've decided that we are going to be pig farmers. And we, the, the, these pigs, we just, we just really love them. I mean, they have such a nice personality. They, you know, they're, they're not aggressive in any way. They're easy to handle. Um, and we just, we decided that we want to start breeding more pigs, both to supply meat for us and to sell to other, other local people. Yeah, and we, we decided to come up with a different name for that business um, part of it. Um, we decided to call it Hog Heaven Homestead. Um, so we're not sure if we're going to change the YouTube channel name right now. I don't know. That doesn't really matter. But we registered as an LLC. We will be um, hopefully breeding pigs and selling feeders and pigs and even the product, um, the pork product. We hope to sell that as well. So. I don't know. We're excited, nervous. Um, these pigs are great. We're really enjoying them. We're really enjoying this way of life. Um, you know, we're a little older than a lot of people that start out doing homesteading and farming, but um, if we can do it, I think anyone can. And I'm going to give most of the credit to Kevin. He does all the work, hard work, but um, he's going to show you here uh, a little bit of the work that we have, he has been doing to prepare to bring on more pigs. Um, and this weekend, um, we're going to pick up two more piglets. Um, yeah, breeding piglets. So the, both of them are gilts this weekend. And then we also have another one on reserve, a boar, um, that we will be picking up. It was just born here about a week ago. So we won't be getting that for another eight, eight nine weeks. Yeah, but right now, um, Saturday we're picking up one gilt, and then Sunday we're picking up another gilt. Right. So we'll have those two. Um, I'm a little worried that the one little gilt is going to be alone. We can't put a, her in with the other two pigs that we have no, now. No, because they might gang up on her. You know, I mean, she's a little bit young yet. Just we got to wait until she gets a little bit bigger, can kind of fend for herself and the other ones kind of get to know her better. Yeah, so I, I of course, the mom and me always worries. Oh, it's only going to be one night though. So anyway, so Kevin said I should pitch a tent and stay out there with the little piggy the one night so it's not alone. So I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're really excited about that and we're going to show you now um, the work that Kevin's been doing to prepare um, all the different paddocks uh, for the pigs. And why did you want to have so many different paddocks? Well, I mean, they are still pigs. And these pigs don't root as much as other pigs, um, but they still do root. And you don't want to leave them in one area too long because then they completely destroy it and then it never will recover. So by uh, rotational grazing them into different paddocks, it allows that uh, each of the paddocks to recover over time. I mean, so if you have eight paddocks, um, it has eight weeks to recover. That's nice. So they're not always, they're not in like dirt. They're always right. going to be in a green, I mean, that's somewhat the goal. green. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for anyway, is so that they're not just on solid dirt, that they have some green and grass to eat or whatever. So, um, yeah, so we're pretty excited about this. Um, it's a little bit scary and nerve wracking as well, but um, it's amazing when we think about it and look back at how far we've come in just the past two years, um, what we've accomplished and what Kevin has accomplished mostly um, on the property. So 
a greenhouse and all the animals. It's just amazing. I'm not sure what we're going to do next, if we're going to get cows or... Yeah, um, I mean, eventually, I think that's the goal is to add, add another animal, probably one or two animals you know, per year. Um, and cow, I think, is probably the, the next one, possibly. Or maybe some goats, who knows, yep. or a donkey. Um, anyway, so here's uh, some clips of the work that Kevin's been doing, and then um, stick around. Uh, after that, we're gonna sh I'm going to show you a quick update on the greenhouse. If you watched my hydroponic video and what I've done out in the green greenhouse, you'll want to see the update of how that looks now. So, um, hope you enjoy this. Today I'm going to be putting in some fencing for the another a second pig paddock. Um, I'm going to be setting some cedar posts that we got from some friends of ours. Thank you, Sandy and Jake. For my corner posts and where the gates are going to go. I'm going to have two gates. One that's going to lead from the other paddock and then another one over that way. But eventually I'm going to build more paddocks that way. So, But for now I'm just going to be setting, setting posts and uh, then we'll be running some electrical wires. Well, that was some some pretty hard ground here. So drilling the hole down about 24 inches. Posts are gonna be total length of six foot. So two foot in the ground, 48 inches out. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out and then we'll set the post. So I'm just gonna cut this pole, this long pole down to six feet. And now I'll go in the hole. All right, I'm gonna strip the bark off of these. Also, because they stay, the bark stays a little wet. And so I don't want, I'm, I'm thinking without the bark, they might not rot as quickly. And this stuff's been laying around for years, I think. The bark just peels right off of it. So it's kept dry, though, for many years. I'm going to make sure I am 96 inches between the two posts for my gate. Now actually, I'm off here. 96 inches in the center. Unfortunately, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to dig the back side of this down and move this pole that way. It shouldn't be too hard to do with this post hole bigger, hopefully. They got little measurement marks on the handles. Okay. And throw it in the hole. Throw a level on here, get it somewhat plumb. It's not gonna be perfect, obviously, because the posts aren't straight. But I want to get it somewhat close. 
or your eye sees, in this case, that it's fairly plumb. Backfill with the dirt, pack it down. Well, you think you'd have plenty of dirt. So I want the, the, the dirt to kind of be crowned a little bit right at the base of the post so that water doesn't sit right next to the post. And you could use T-posts for this too, but T-posts right now are kind of expensive. Used to be able to get a T post for about you know, a little over three bucks. Now they're over five bucks. So I already had these. I figured I'm going to use them. With an electric fence, you don't need real heavy posts. You're not stretching the fence, so it really doesn't take much of a post to hold. It. And you don't have livestock leaning on it because it's what. All right, move on to the next. Okay, so I decided I wanted to strengthen these corners up with the gates on them so that the gate doesn't sag over time. So I just added a few more uh, ties here to stiffen this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other gate as well. Once I get that done, then we can start with the, the actual fencing. You see I did it on the other side over there as well where the gate latches. Should be good and solid and uh, shouldn't have to worry about that for a while. the other side of the gate so the gate's gonna latch <laughs> all right that's it for the wooden pole now I can actually start running the electric fence away and that finishes up the job of putting all the wooden posts in and the gates up so now I got to do is put the insulators on the, the rebar posts and then run the electric wire. I'll be doing that tomorrow. 
Okay, so today I just got to set the, the small rebar posts in the ground. I already have them all spaced out. And then I'm going to put the insulators on them and run the wire. That's it for the rebar posts. Now I can put all the insulators on. So I set up my fences for my pigs with four wires. And I know you can probably get by with three, but I just add the top wire just as an added maybe predator security. Um, and it looks nicer. The way I do it is I set it up so that it goes six from the ground for the first one. And then the next one will be eight above the first one. And then the third one will be 10 above the second one. So six, eight, 10. And then the last one, I just put it right at the top. Again, pigs aren't gonna get over this one, um, but I just like to add this one on. It looks nicer with the top wire on and it also might keep away some coyotes and that kind of thing. Any kind of predator trying to jump over. They may come up, nose the wire, get zapped and take off. That's my hope anyway. So I'm going to go around and set all of these up like this. And then I'll be back and then we'll run some wire. All right, so after I get the wires ran, <clears throat> I wrap it around this insulator and then come back and put this crimp on here. Oops. <clears throat> and then I just use this crimping tool, crimp it down. Put a couple in. I actually put three just to make sure. All right, I'll go down to the other end, finish that end off. Okay, so on the opposite end of that same wire, I put a strainer, what's called a, a strainer. This allows you to, to tension the fence as it, if it loosens up. And I just create a loop and stick it through this insulator and then crimp it back on itself. Like that. And then we'll take the other end, the wire. We're going to run that through this hole on the strainer. And then we can just tighten this up. I'm going to probably cut this off a little shorter, the wire, and I wouldn't have to wrap it as much, but... Yeah, it'll get there. Just keep turning that, and it'll snug right up. Alright, and that's it. Today all we have left to do is put up the hog panels through this alleyway leading to the pasture that the pigs are currently in. And uh, then the fencing is complete. 
I'm just going to use these fence clips to clip the hog panels to the T posts. And on this end, I'm just going to use these inch and a quarter fencing staples to staple it to the uh, wooden post. Alright, one side down and one to go. All right, so the alleyway is done, leading to the other pasture. I still got to put the fencer over here and energize the fence, and then we should be ready to move the paint. So all I'm going to be doing here is that there's four electric strands down there going across that opening. I'm just going to cut those off because that's eventually going to be a gate, and then we're just going to lead them down this way into this pasture. And then we'll close this gate. Okay, for the greenhouse update, for those of you who followed along when I did a bunch of moves and um, moved a lot of the hydroponic stuff into the dirt and vice versa, I'll give you a quick update, but look at how everything's growing. Look at to the right how tall my plants are. In the hydroponics there. We have already um, harvested some, a few of the peppers out of here, but in the first tote, these orange bells, if uh, my daughter could do a side-by-side -side of some of these, they were teeny tiny three weeks ago, they're huge now. And then this next one, these are called the Hungarian Hot Wax, and I've got some turning colors already these will turn red but a lot of fruit on this plant a lot of good healthy looking fruit this one here is habanero red and I've got one turning red over here another one here a couple of them here turning red a lot of fruit if you get right down here you can see there's tons of them so that's fun that one's growing really well the back plant has a ton of fruit on it as well um, these little spread savinas they're going a little slower I'm not sure why but that's okay they're still alive they're still thriving they'll catch up and then these jalapenos, these four plants here I transplanted, they were teeny tiny. This one is huge. There's a lot of flowers. I don't see any fruit yet, but there will be soon. Next we've got Purple Beauty. And these are going to town. We've already harvested several of these peppers. They're like a dark color here, dark purple. And this one back here is huge so that's purple beauty they're sweet they they're not hot um, but we really liked them and then the next totes we've got uh, Cubanali and we have harvested a cup a couple of these already it's a big one right there it's a nice size one right there Another large one there. So those are doing really good. And then we've got chili pie. We have one turning red here. And some in the back there growing really nice. And then this last toad on this side is habanero orange. And there's a lot of little, this one got blown over a little bit. A lot of little, um, fruit growing but 
and tons and tons of flowers. So there's gonna be a lot on this guy, but we'll give it a little chance to catch up. And then to my raised bed here, I've got all of the middle part here are all jalapeno. And let's see, sorry about the, the beagle barking in the background. She's constantly hunting and barking is part of her game. So there's a jalapeno here. And yeah, I don't see any more yet on these, but oh no, there, there is, there's a bunch. <laughs> so there's one here, a couple down here, a bunch back there. So yeah, this, these are all doing really well. I'm only five feet tall and they're probably almost to my neck in height. So these guys are doing well. This is my chamomile tea, growing really nice. I need to harvest a ton of these flowers off. And then I've got a couple Ozark, or this one in front is an Ozark giant. No uh, fruit off that yet. But back here, um, this one is a hot banana pepper, is what it's called. And I've got quite a few of those growing. Hot banana pepper, we're excited to try that. And then I have just a couple of Ozark Bell in the middle here. I believe that's what these two are as well, Ozark Bell. And then look at how well my little Count Dracula plants are doing. If you remember, these were just sticks without any leaves. They've got tons of flowers, tons of new growth. Um, I don't see any fruit yet, but that will come soon. And then I have my little cayenne pepper plant with absolutely tons of peppers growing. They're all still green, but there's just a ton of them in there. Those are fun. All of a sudden you'll come in here and they'll all be red and you can pick them. Moving to outside, um, looks like a lot of my onions here in this raised bed are ready to harvest. Once they fall over like that, they're done. So I'm gonna have to harvest some of those. That's my first raised bed of onion. Here's my second raised bed of onions and a lot of those are falling over as well. So I need to get those picked. This is my first raised bed of beets and it is growing fantastic. Um, I should have thinned some of these out. I didn't. So I'll pay the price for that with smaller beets and the holes where there's more than one plant. But it's a little late to do that now. Here is my second raised bed of beets. I planted this one about two to three weeks after the first one. So it's coming along nicely too. And here's my corner raised bed of all the miscellaneous plants that I took from the greenhouse that weren't doing well and I put out here. As you can see, all of them are thriving. Everything is thriving. In the back I have two tomatillo plants and in the front here I have um, an herb, but I think that's rosemary. But other than that, these are all plants that I took from the greenhouse that weren't doing so hot. And I'll show you up close on a couple of these. This one here is called Giant Marconi, and we do have a nice big pepper growing there, and another one starting here. They kind of curl a little bit, but yeah, I think I might have to um, pull it. Well, as soon as they turn red, they'll be done, but they're nice and big. And next door here, we have cherry pickets called. So these little guys here, I have three small little red ones are about ready to pick i think this one's ready to pick now so i'll come back out and harvest that this is a marachi doing pretty good needs to get a little bit bigger and then this one here is a fresno chili hot pepper and i've got quite a few peppers on it none that are quite ready to pick they need to turn red but they're looking good and healthy so yeah, moving these out here did did great, or they're doing well. 
This one in the middle here is also a mariachi and it's starting to turn red. And looks like we have a cute stuff red that has a little one here. So yeah, the experiment of moving them out and moving them around in the greenhouse, I would say was very successful. In the background there, you'll see I have a um, perennial bed and this is to draw in pollinators. When I originally planted this, it was all gold and purple plants, but a lot of the gold ones did not come back. So I've put in some bee balm and some other perennials that I like, but a couple of the purple ones came back, none of the gold. But it's fun to come out here. There's usually always butterflies on this, uh, on the milkweed, which is the tall ones with the pink. Um, butterflies need milkweed to survive, and so that's why I planted that here. I'm probably, if I can get it to thrive, I'm gonna probably move some out and maybe line the, line the garden area here with milkweed because I really would like to get a lot of pollinators in here. The bees love it too. So that's it on my greenhouse garden update. Thanks for watching. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any suggestions for us or tips or tricks or any questions about the hydroponic gardening, let me know. Um, so on our next video, we're going to show you our new piglets and how they're adapting and, and doing in the um, their new spot. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and please share this with others that are interested in homesteading and pigs or any of the things that we're doing here on the homestead or if you just want to encourage some people to um, try this way of life that would be greatly appreciated but thanks for watching bye for now